Hello, everybody. Welcome into this episode of Unwritten. I'm your co-host, Colin McGuire, with uh, Jess, who it looks very tired today. Are you tired, Jess? I'm always tired these days. <laughs> well, we have a very special guest this week. Of course, it's Mr. Mr. Paul Espinoza of so many different walks of life, so many different reasons for fame. But uh, we wanted to bring you on to talk a little bit about Rockwell, because Rockwell is up and running now. Uh, obviously. And one thing that uh, I was kind of, I wanted to start with was how you got involved with Rock, Rockwell to begin with and what brought you there. Well, Colin, Jess, I appreciate the opportunity to be with you today. And uh, really, I, I guess it probably, uh, you know, traces back to uh, before I was associated with Rockwell, of course, in my uh, public policy role, uh, certainly was very interested in the project and particularly when uh, concerns uh, first started to arise, uh, I guess that was probably mid-year of 2018. And, you know, the more I learned about the project, the more I, the more impressed I became with the company and uh, really became convinced that uh, their sustainability model that they were pursuing, uh, you know, would enable uh, them to operate here in Jefferson County uh, in full compliance with all requirements. And, you know, I really, uh, I, I guess it's fair to say that all of my adult life, I've been an advocate for uh, economic development, trying to expand employment opportunities in Jefferson County. And so when I learned that Rockwell was looking for a community liaison, someone to help them to deliver on their commitment to the community, yeah, I thought that was a role that I could bring something to help uh, uh, folks become more uh, familiar with the project and uh, uh, hopefully grow in acceptance just as I uh, was able to uh, grow in acceptance of the facility the more I learned about it. So uh, I'm very pleased that uh, it seems like here over the last uh, a little more than two years that I've been associated with Rockwell, I think we have have made tremendous strides in as uh, the community has become more aware of the facts surrounding the project. Uh, I'm very pleased that you know we're seeing the type of acceptance, acceptance that you know, Rockwell had hoped to receive all along. Yeah, it was it was kind of tough for a little bit, wasn't it? There there were there were some outspoken people, um, I think, and groups of people who kind of opposed this. Do you see that lessening now as time goes on? That, uh, like you said, is it a little more supportive, or do you still have those people on the opposite side that that come at you a lot? Well, we're very pleased with the level of acceptance we're seeing. I think probably the uh, best indicator of the level of acceptance is the response to our hiring campaign. Uh, we've hired, I believe, 113 individuals uh, so to date. Uh, we'll be ramping up to 150 as we uh, move towards full production here uh, within the uh, next several months. And so I think that's a pretty good indicator that there is good acceptance of, of the factory. Now, uh, to be fair, you know, certainly there are individuals that remain concerned or opposed to the facility. Uh, frankly, I think there are probably some folks that will never fully accept the facility, but uh, I think by and large, I think the community, as they've learned the facts of the facility, uh, I think they have grown in acceptance and we really can be more pleased with the response we are getting uh, from the community and from uh, those individuals uh, seeking to join our team. I, and I, I wanted to, I, we should back up just a tiny bit and then Jess, you can hop in if, you, if you'd like, but for those who don't know, what does Rockwell make? What what kind of plant is it? What goes on there? Well, Rockwell uh, is uh, the leading manufacturer of stonewall insulation uh, in the world. Uh, essentially, we make building insulation, both residential and commercial uh, stonewall insulation. The products that we make uh, 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 are probably most popular because of some of the key uh, qualities that other insulation, frankly, uh, in most cases does not have. Uh, first and foremost, non-combustibility. So as uh, building codes increasingly specify the use of non-combustible building materials, our stonewall insulation product, which is made from natural stone, is ideally suited to uh, meet those requirements. One of the other key attributes of the uh, stonewall insulation that we make is the acoustic performance, uh, ideally uh, suited for those applications where you're trying to uh, provide a sound barrier, 
uh, educational settings, uh, hospitals, uh, even in the, a residential setting where you're renovating uh, your home and wanting to make sure that activities in one part of your house, perhaps your man cave, doesn't interfere with other aspects of your house. Uh, our stonewall insulation provides great acoustic performance. Uh, and so that, again, has resulted in tremendous uh, growth and demand uh, here in the United States, particularly in the Eastern United States. And because we're located in fairly close proximity to the Mid-Atlantic United States and the Northeast United States, uh, we're ideally situated to be able to meet that growing demand for our high quality stonewall insulation products. Kind of going back to the, the divisiveness maybe, I don't know if that's the right way to word it. As an elected official, it did have to be at least nice for you to see the public taking an interest in this and, and you, making use of the forum. I'm thinking specifically to that Ranson meeting a little over a year ago where we had almost a hundred people just commenting and expressing their thoughts and doing the research. Well, uh, again, uh, Rockwell uh, certainly has been committed to providing uh, information to the public so that they can be better informed about the facility. And, you know, uh, we've been happy to host not only supporters of the project out here to the facility, but uh, in some cases opponents so that they could uh, very clearly see the lengths that Rockwell is going to to make sure that we're fully compliant with all local, state, and federal laws. And I think uh, one of the uh, things that has led to greater ex uh, acceptance of our facility is that as we've had some of those groups come through, be able to see themselves, uh, the lengths to which we're going to not only comply with, with what are very strict uh, regulations uh, pertaining to uh, our type of manufacturing process, they see that we've well exceeded those type of, of uh, requirements. For example, uh, we've uh, voluntarily installed air monitoring stations at the two nearby elementary schools. That's not something that's typically required by the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection or the EPA, but uh, as a further assurance to the community, we thought it was valuable to install those air monitors so that the public could see well in advance of the start of operations what the air quality was here in Jefferson County and then be able to judge for themselves the impact uh, going forward. And uh, that's uh, uh, something that the community can look at uh, on a daily or a hourly basis uh, through uh, our Rockwell uh, Ransom Community Facebook page. There's a link there where, again, folks can go and see that information. We've installed groundwater monitoring wells, which again, is not required by uh, the uh, West Virginia DEP or the EPA. But because we've heard some concerns, despite the fact that no process water, no production water leaves our site, uh, we uh, installed voluntarily groundwater monitoring well so that uh, folks can see uh, and the DEP can see what the quality of groundwater is upstream from the site and downstream for the site. And again, we're obviously very confident that there will be no impact from our facility because there is no production water that leaves the site. So just a couple of examples of how we've not only tried to be faithful uh, to meeting those uh, 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 stringent regulations, but we've gone well above uh, those regulations to provide that additional uh, level, level of assurance. And uh, 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 Colin and uh, Jess, as you may recall, a little over a year ago, we announced that rather than start off with using coal as our primary fuel source, we decided uh, we were able to uh, start up uh, our operations uh, solely with natural gas. That resulted uh, in an additional 30% reduction in CO2 emissions, which uh, is uh, greatly reducing what already were uh, emissions levels, approved emission levels that are well below uh, permitted levels. You know, you mentioned, or Jess mentioned, you're sort of, your other life is a politician too, and being a, a represent, like, how do those two things marry each other? Does that, is it, is it odd? Do you put on one hat and you, you're completely removed from the other, or do they bleed into each other in any way? Well, I do try to keep those aspects of, uh, of my life as separate as I can. Although, uh, as I indicated uh, earlier, you know, I, I make no, um, 
you know, apology for the fact that I've been a longtime advocate for economic development, job creation. I think one of the things that really uh, spurred my interest in public service was to try to uh, attract uh, uh, high quality job creators to West Virginia and particularly Jefferson County and Eastern Panhandle so that our young folks don't have to feel uh, the need to leave West Virginia in order to pursue uh, opportunities. And so when I first uh, learned of Rockwell's uh, plans to locate here in Jefferson County back uh, mid-year of 2017, well before I became associated with Rockwell, you know, I couldn't have been more excited. Uh, I heard very, very positive uh, things from folks that were familiar with Rockwell. And uh, as I've learned more about it uh, as a public official and now uh, as their uh, public affairs manager serving as the community liaison, uh, I've just become more convinced that Rockwell is uh, what they purport to be, a high quality employer that's committed to providing uh, great jobs and uh, better serving their customers uh, here in the uh, mid-Atlantic and Northeast United States. Kind of touching on that then, Rockwell being this giant example, you have to be really excited about the economic growth Jefferson County seen, especially in like downtown Trostown and Branson working to, to expand, Shepherdstown working to expand. What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, you know, certainly uh, uh, very pleased to play an important role in that. And even during the pandemic, uh, we were um, uh, very pleased, very proud of the fact that we were able to continue our construction activities with an average of about 500 individuals on site uh, on a daily basis, including our construction workers, as well as our uh, growing uh, full-time staff. And, you know, that uh, clearly, uh, you know, means a lot to individuals who are trying to provide for their families and very pleased that we were able to continue that, you know, despite the uh, uh, pandemic. And now that we've begun our commercial production, uh, um, uh, beginning, you know, actually some of the test production back uh, in late May and then beginning uh, our commercial production in early July, uh, really excited about the opportunities that's providing for our employees. I've, I've had an opportunity to interact with some of uh, my uh, new colleagues here and they couldn't be more excited and just really pleased to be part of a employer that uh, is committed to doing things the right way and uh, making the necessary investments, you know, literally hundreds of millions of dollars in investments to create what arguably is the most technologically advanced stonewall manufacturing facility in the world. And that's right here in Jefferson County, West Virginia. So. It's really a great story. And again, I think as uh, you know, we continue to demonstrate uh, our ability to operate in a manner that uh, is respectful of the community, uh, certainly uh, much of the infrastructure that was deployed in order to su initially support our operations uh, like water, sewer, natural gas, uh, the uh, power upgrade by First Energy, as well as telecommunications uh, upgrades throughout this whole corridor. Obviously those are uh, amenities, uh, those are services that are also available for both residential and other commercial customers that may uh, uh, ultimately choose to locate here in Jefferson County. So really pleased to be part of that economic development, which is going to provide uh, well-paying jobs with great benefits right here in Jefferson County. Uh, so that those folks that are looking for something a little closer to home uh, can do so and uh, perhaps even uh, be able to uh, participate more, fu more fully in the community rather than engage in that uh, 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 long commute uh, down into Northern Virginia and uh, the metropolitan area. You brought up uh, commercial production and how you were able to start that beginning of July. Did everything turn out on schedule for you guys or were, were things backed up because of, say, the pandemic and, and the, with the COVID-19 pandemic, too? It's kind of a two part question. How did you guys navigate your way through that? Well, not unlike, uh, I think, virtually any other uh, operation, uh, any other business, uh, certainly encountered some challenges, uh, particularly with uh, travel restrictions uh, related to some of our European colleagues who uh, uh, necessarily traveled or needed to travel here to the United States to help oversee the testing and, and commissioning of 
uh, the equipment, much of the equipment that you see behind me. Uh, also, uh, many of our key employees that were hired uh, late last year, um, they were uh, also uh, required to visit one of our other factories, either here in North America or in some cases over in Europe in order to complete their training. Some of that training uh, or some of that travel rather was delayed as well. So it did uh, result in some delays, but as far as uh, coming on board, uh, uh, the, the facility could not uh, come online at a better time. Uh, we are experiencing tremendous demand for our stonewall insulation products across North America, particularly here in the Northeast United States. And uh, I can tell you that our, our customers uh, uh, couldn't be more excited to see this increase in capacity that this facility uh, represents. Uh, now that we are uh, uh, beginning to uh, uh, commercially produce, uh, we, we have a very aggressive uh, timeline to, you know, get our production up to uh, the levels that, you know, we anticipate that we'll be able to get to once we, you know, have our staff fully assembled and our staff fully trained. And so, uh, again, just very excited to be in a position now where, you know, we can be generating the products that our, our customers are very anxious to see. Now, I remember there was a time when you, I think you said every, you guys were gonna run tours. You were gonna offer tours to people once you got up and running. Is that going on currently or when is that scheduled to happen? Well, we're still uh, uh, observing uh, uh, significant COVID protocols. Uh, so for that reason, we are somewhat limited in those type of tours. As far as uh, some of our local officials, uh, media folks uh, such as yourself, I know that you've been out to the facility and you know we welcome those stakeholders to be able to actually see for themselves the facility. We're really anxious to be able to uh, open the facility up more. And we're hopeful that as we get later in this year, we get uh, fully behind the uh, COVID pandemic, that we will be able to increasingly open the facility. One of the features, one of the aspects of uh, our ransom facility uh, is uh, a brand experience center, which is our first brand experience center here in the Northeast United States, or I'm sorry, here in North America. And that brand experience center, uh, local community, as well as our customers to be able to uh, view uh, a very hands-on interactive uh, a display, a series of displays uh, of, of our uh, stonewall manufacturing process, and then uh, be able to actually tour the facility. So uh, really anxious to be able to show off our facility once again, we have the COVID pandemic fully behind us. Jess, did you have anything? I, I have uh, at least one more, but I want you to go first. No, you're good, go right ahead. <laughs> um, I'm just sort of wondering, is this, I, you came to this job, Paul, and, and I wasn't sure if you were going to, once everything was up and running, if it was just kind of a, you know, be there until everything goes and then you go somewhere else. Is this a job where, you know, you're going to be at, you can see yourself out for the five, 10, 15 years? Well, Rockwell is clearly in this for the long haul. I mean, this facility, again, a several hundred million dollar investment, uh, really designed to be here you know, for uh, perhaps a, a hundred years or more. So Rockwell certainly made a, a long-term commitment and I'm really uh, pleased to be able to serve in my role, not just uh, to address uh, and, and help to facilitate, you know, some of the community uh, acceptance that we've seen here uh, over the last uh, couple of years, but now that we are operational to, again, uh, just uh, continue to allow uh, or help uh, Rockwell deliver on that commitment to uh, the community. So I'll continue in my role, uh, interacting with uh, local uh, officials in particular, and also the community uh, to, again, just uh, uh, do everything that we can to uh, uh, deliver on the promise to uh, be a, a solid corporate citizen here and uh, be a, uh, a an employer here that uh, folks can be proud of and uh, will want to uh, um, join uh, join our team okay well we can't let you go without asking a couple of fun questions i know jess okay. has a, a bunch of fun questions in mind i'll start out if 
If you were to recommend one place to eat in Jefferson County, where would it be? Well, that's a tough one because uh, certainly uh, our, our family, uh, most of whom are still located here in the area, we enjoy uh, frequenting a lot of our great uh, dining establishments uh, here in Jefferson County. Uh, the Final Cut certainly a special place that my wife and I enjoy uh, visiting, uh, particularly on special occasions or anniversaries and, and when uh, special guests come in from out of town. So uh, really enjoy uh, their facility. So I'd, I'd say that's probably right at the top of the list. Uh, the Final Cut there at the Hollywood Casino. I've always wanted to try that. I've never tried it. Jess, have you tried it? I have not, but I've been to Nine Dragons and I love Nine Dragons. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, we're big fans of Nine Dragons too. So uh, uh, we 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 probably uh, visit Nine Dragons a little bit more, but do enjoy the final cut for special occasions. Well, you can't not love Chef Ken. So Nine Dragons is the place to be. <laughs> yeah, yep. I've never I've never uh, had anything on the menu that wasn't delicious. So certainly highly recommend that too. That kind of leads into what I wanted to ask. You know, the track has horse racing back up. They're bringing back live. Uh, entertainment. We've got the car show coming downtown, the new visitor center with so many opportunities. What are you excited to do in the county now that the pandemic's slightly gone away? <laughs> well, I, I've certainly enjoyed getting out and uh, I know a few of the uh, early events uh, like the Chamber of Commerce recently had their monthly uh, meeting and a few outdoor events that I've attended. Uh, again, the Chamber of Commerce had their uh, annual, um, I think it was blue, uh, Denim and uh, Diamonds event, uh, a nice outdoor event over at um, uh, the um, Lewis's farm over in, in Shepherdstown. So I think anything outside uh, where, you know, we can just get together and be able to get back to a sense of normalcy. So uh, certainly uh, Rockwell has been a big supporter of a lot of the events you mentioned. Uh, I know the Ransom Festival and car show that's coming up uh, later this year. Uh, we look forward to once again, sponsoring that event, uh, most likely. Uh, helping sponsor the entertainment so uh certainly look forward uh, to attending as many of those uh, community events as, as we can and of course the jefferson county fair uh really excited to once again have the jefferson county fair uh scheduled to uh, take place this year so uh again look forward to getting out there eating some funnel cake and uh seeing the animals and just you know visiting with folks in the community we are uh in the middle of the olympics currently uh, is there a favorite Olympic sport that you enjoy watching? Well, uh, last night uh, we uh, were sitting uh, uh, there by our TV sets, uh, anxiously, anxiously watching the uh, women's softball team uh, compete against the uh, Tokyo uh, uh, Japan team, and uh, it uh, uh, that was that's probably the sport that really I'm watching the the most. Uh, so. I'd say that's the one that really is appointment uh, tele television for us in our household. Our daughter uh, was, of course, a, uh, a multi-year uh, participant there with Washington High School's uh, softball team. Has played a lot of uh, travel softball. I've officiated uh, and still officiate uh, high school girls softball, so we enjoy watching that. Did get a chance to watch a little bit of the indoor men's uh, volleyball uh, competition. And I was just blown away by the pace of that play. And uh, I mean, those, play, uh, those uh, players can elevate. It's really fun to see uh, that level of competition with the men's volleyball. Okay, Paul, tell me, what's your favorite TV show right now? What should we be checking out? <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, uh, I don't watch as much uh, television as I typically have. Uh, we were watching, uh, but unfortunately we binged all the way through it. The, uh, what is it called, Pinky? Uh, it's on um, Netflix. Uh, the the uh, oh, British show? Pinky Blinders? Yes. <laughs> Pinky Blinders, yes. Pinky Blinders. Uh, our son encouraged us to watch, uh, you know, the first couple episodes, and it did not take long for us to uh, really get hooked on it. And within the course of about two or three weeks, we'd gone through five seasons of Pinky <laughs> Blinders. So. Really can't wait for uh, the next uh, season uh, to come along. I'm not sure when it's scheduled out, but uh, that'll definitely uh, be uh, appointment television for us in our household. I've got one more. Jess, do you have any? Uh, no, you're good. Oh, Go ahead. That's it. Okay. You, you can only have dinner with three people. Who are they going to be? 
Oh, wow. That's a difficult one. Uh, geez. Well, I'd say, uh, you know, uh, really proud of my uh, uh, Catholic faith. So uh, certainly uh, Pope Francis would be someone that I would really enjoy uh, having an opportunity to, to have dinner with. Um, geez, beyond uh, the Pope, that's probably a difficult one. Um, what about your wife? <laughs> well, fortunately, we dine together on a regular basis. That's something we definitely tr always try to carve out, uh, you know, time to do that uh, together. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I guess that's actually probably a, uh, not a bad point there, Colin. I mean, just I think any time we have the entire family together, that's a bit of a feat, you know, in our household because, you know, our son is uh, located over in Berkeley County. Our oldest daughter uh, teaches in uh, Loudoun County and uh, our daughter is a senior at Shepherd University. So anytime we can have the whole family around the table, that's certainly uh, a, a, great, uh, a great time. So certainly that would definitely uh, be at the top of my list as well. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Well, well, Paul, thank you so much for taking the time. We really, really appreciate it. I know you're busy. Uh, there's a lot going on at Rockwell. Wanted to update everybody on it. If anybody wants to find more information, where can they find that online? Well, uh, the best place to go is to our uh, local microsite, which is rockwell.com slash West Virginia. Also, our Facebook page, our Rockwell Community Facebook page. Uh, we try to uh, regularly post uh, information on there, uh, a little update. So would encourage uh, folks to visit uh, those two locations. Uh, certainly, I'd be remiss, uh, uh, Colin, Jeff, if I didn't uh, uh, urge folks that uh, might be considering a career here at Rockwell to reach out. If they go to uh, rockwelljobs.com, uh, they'll see a listing of all of our local jobs. They can search by location. Here uh, at our ransom facility, uh, we have uh, several roles in particular that we're hiring for a general operator, warehouse person, machine technician, uh, electrical and instrumentation uh, technicians uh, are just a few of those roles and uh, great jobs, uh, a starting rate at $17.50 an hour plus excellent benefits. So uh, if folks are, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, interested in learning more about uh, Rockwell, uh, certainly we encourage them to again visit rockwelljobs.com. They can see the openings and, and apply online. That sounds good, everybody. If you need a job, Paul's giving them away. Paul will give you a job. Just call him. Give him a give him a phone call or a text message. But uh, thank you again for coming on. We really appreciate it. I'm sure we will talk soon, one way or another. And thanks so much, Paul. Thanks, thanks Paul. Colin, Jess. Appreciate the opportunity, and uh, hope to see you out here at the site uh, soon.